All right. We are live. We are live. We are live. We are live. Hello, everyone. All of you on um, Facebook, how are you doing? All of you on um, Instagram, how are you doing today? How was today? How was today? Please, can I get to know you? Introduce yourself. Let me know how you're, you know how you're doing. Good evening. Tell me where you're joining from. Tell me where you're joining from. Good evening, all of you on Facebook. Nice to see you on Facebook. All of you on Instagram. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, thank you, Ben. So, you know, you know, today we're talking about how to hear God clearly, part two. We're talking about how to hear God clearly. We started the teaching last week. So we're just going to wait. So you can just share with me where you're, where you're speaking from and where you're joining from. You know, thank you so much from Festac. It's nice to meet you. Okay, thank you so much from Facebook. It's nice to see you also. Um, Hook Zone Empire, it's nice to see you. Morene K from Momole, it's nice to see you. Um, from Lagos, it's nice to see you. Aline from Zimbabwe, Aline from Zimbabwe, it's nice to see you. It's nice to see you. Tolani from Canada, it's nice to see you. Toby from Shomoli, it's nice to see you. This Chini from Wari Delsa says, it's nice to see you. Kenny from Ambalta, Canada, it's nice to see you. I always have a love with Jonas from Canada. From Mikoyi, it's nice to see you. From Abuja, it's nice to see you. And um, from Lekki, it's nice to see you. From Maya from Dubai, Maya, it's nice to see you from Dubai. It's really nice to see you. And Stephanie from Texas, of course. Um, Redai from Canada again. That's from Canada. And we have another Maria from Toronto, Canada. Oh, wow. And from Kenny Pompey from Francisco, California. That's a long, just morning from the love from London, from Texas. Where's from Hungary? Oh, it's nice to see you from Hungary. From Ikorodi, it's nice to see you. From Lagos, it's nice to see you. From Adoikiti, it's nice to see you. All right. So what you can do for me is this. If you have friends that have shown you interest, Amaka from Dallas, it's nice to see you. That have shown interest that they want to, they want to, um, you know, hear this teaching on how to hear the voice of God. I want to suggest to you that um, this would be a good time for you to ask them to join. Upper from Canada, so many people from, you know, from UK. You know, it's just good from Houston, Texas. So we have a lot of people join us from Houston and from Lagos and from Canada. That's really good. All right. So last week, we began to talk about the concept that why don't we hear God? And we explained in a very practical way that the reason why we don't hear God is number one, because most people don't believe that they can hear God. Most people don't believe they can hear God. And the way spiritual substance work, how does it work? The way it works is very simple. You become what you believe. So if you believe you can hear God, you will hear him. If you don't believe you can hear God, you will not be able to hear him. That's exactly how it works. So today we're going to go further. And in today's, uh, you know, in, in today's next talk, I will want to just share with you two things. Number one, I want to talk to you about how can I be? So, so how does God speak? The reason why I said so is this. You know, one of the things I said to you before was this. One, if you don't know how God speaks, you will not understand how God speaks. So the Bible speaks clearly. What does the Bible speak clearly? The Bible speaks clearly. And what does the Bible say? The Bible makes us understand that Samuel could not understand God, not because God did not speak to him, but also because Samuel was not used to hearing the voice of God. That Samuel was not used to hearing the voice of God. All right, so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get right into this. Let's, you know, let's go ahead and get that into it. Okay, I'm hearing that Facebook is not live. I thought I saw them live some few minutes ago. Okay, I think from my end is showing life. I saw some people online just some minutes ago. All right, I'm just going to keep going ahead and, you know, we'll try to sort it out and maybe we can catch up with this later. All right, so let's look at Proverbs. So I want to start with something. So in the first place, why should I be led? Like, why should I be led? Who needs to be led? So 
in this kind of teaching today, there are some just some basic questions. Who needs to be led? Why do I want to be led? So the first thing is this. Um, the Bible says in Proverbs 14, 12, the Bible says, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, and the end thereof is the way of destruction. So this is why you need to be led. This is why you need to be led. Number one, because naturally speaking, that decision looks like a great decision, but really it's a terrible decision. I'll give an example. I heard the story of um I heard the story of um this um this lady, a certain guy in church and a very great church was asking her out and the guy ticked all the boxes, sound like a very great Christian guy, and they were going to, you know, date. But every time she kind of just wanted to say yes, she felt a pullback and felt, no, 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 I don't want to do this. So eventually they didn't date and all of those things. Um few months after um, information popped up that that guy was actually bisexual and not as if I have something against um, I, I don't have something against the people you know I may not share the same beliefs with them you know but that they are bis that was bisexual the challenge was that he was bisexual and he was not willing to disclose that he was bisexual to the person he was going to get married to but nobody knew that and that was just the intention of the Holy Spirit I'll give another good example. There was someone that wanted to do an investment and the investment didn't seem so great because, but all the paperwork were perfected. And the more he investigated, it just felt this was okay. But eventually it gave it some time and that investment turned out to be a fraud. So that's what the Bible says. See what the Bible says. The Bible says, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof is the ways of destruction. It says, the challenge is this. It's only when you get to the end that you know that this is the way of destruction. That's horrible. So one of the reasons why we have the guidance of the Holy Spirit is this. To prevent us from unnecessary heartbreak. To prevent us from unnecessary heartbreak. So the first thing is this. This is the first thing. Number one. Why do you want to be led? Number one. God leading, number one, gives us perspective. That's one. There are perspective you will never have. There are insight you will never have, except you understand the leading of the Holy Spirit. You want to go into a partnership and you think that this guy is a great person because of the way you met him. You don't understand that some of, some of the documentations in which he used to present his, um, his business case are fake. Just because of the trust you have and the limitation of your due diligence, you cannot just go well. So what happens in that case? In going well, the Spirit of God will begin, the Spirit of God will begin to just pull you in in one way or the other. So what God does that, God in his leading gives you perspective. It gives you perspective that even your mind may not be understand, perspective that even your soul may not be understand. You know, I'll give an example. The Bible says in the book of Acts Apostle that one day Paul was passing by there was this lovely, beautiful young girl. She was a young girl on the, you know, in the market square. Let's assume her name is Shinene. And as she saw Paul passing by, it was almost as if she had the spirit of prophecy. She said, oh my God, oh my God, this is the man of God. This is a man of God that brings us message of salvation. But as soon as Paul heard him, listen to me, what she said was true. What she said was insight, was revelation. But she said it by a demonic spirit. The Bible referred that, that Paul said that spirit was the spirit of divination. The only reason why Paul would know that was because Paul had guidance. So some people know how to say the right things. Some people know how to do the right things. But when you have guidance and perspective, what happens to you is this. The Holy Spirit will actually guide you. So, that's what we need. so the, the guidance gives us perspective. Second thing is this. It gives assurance. I'll give my personal example. So... I'm called to be a pastor and in my worst moment as a pastor because there are challenges in my assignment just like there are challenges in your assignment you know what happens to me what I go back to is what God told me I know people that have been in marriages and they have a challenge maybe the doctor said they can have a child or maybe the man began to misbehave or the woman began to misbehave and when they begin to misbehave the only thing they want to hold on to is that God I didn't come to this marriage myself. You led me here. 
And the thing about God's guidance is this. God's guidance gives assurance because it says this, though you walk through the battle of the shadow of death, I will be with you. God's guidance gives assurance. God will never lead you to a place he cannot take care of you. So maybe you move to Canada, maybe you move to Texas, you move to some Europe, Europe, or you're in some part of Africa, and where you are right now, you see that there's just a lot of struggle, but you know God led you there. You know, the reason why you can pray is because God led you there. And that was how Moses prayed, that was how Joshua prayed. When something happened, you will hear them say, Lord, you are the one that brought us to this place. That's the power of leading. He gives you assurance. And the third thing is that it gives you provision. You know why? God's provision is in his will. God's provision is his will. God will never leave you, lead you into a place he will not provide for you. He told Elijah, he said, go to the brook of Chariot. And in that brook of Chariot, there was provision. As soon as the brook began to dry up, it moved him. He said, go and see the widow of Zarephath. So in God's will is God's provision. And I'm saying this to you because some of you, maybe you're really challenged. Maybe you really feel as if, where is God in the midst of all of this right now? I want to say to you clearly, the place where you are, where there's God's will, there will be provision and there will be protection. There will be provision and there will be protection. Okay, let's, let's fly into this. So how does God lead me? So I want to talk about five ways that God leads me, but I'm going to back up a little. So I said last week that the reason why some people don't hear God is this. Because they are not trained to hear God. So, what does that mean? When God speaks to us, and this is a vital lesson, because, hey, do you want to hear God? This is where you should pull in. This is where you should give you some attention. If you want to hear God, and you are not hearing God, and you want to hear God. So, I have a phone here. Listen to me. Although I have a phone, if the phone does not have a SIM, it will not be able to receive signals. What does that mean? Although the phone is perfect by itself, I still need a network provider. What does that mean in practical terms? Mm -hmm. You are the phone. What God speaks to is your spirit. So God does not speak to this natural ear. God speaks to your spirit. So if your spirit is dead, if your spirit is untrained, if your spirit is uneducated, you will not be able to understand, perceive, what the will of God is. It will be so difficult for you. It will be extremely difficult for you to understand what the will of God is. Just because, you know, because you're not trained. So, I'm saying so. So, the Bible says in the book of, in the book of um, Proverbs, the Bible says, the spirit of the man is the candlelight of the Lord. Another way to say it is this. It says, the spirit of man is the touch point for God. So, when God wants to communicate with you, what God communicates with is not your eyes, what God communicates with is not your mind. What God communicates with is your spirit. That's what the Bible says in First, First Corinthians. He said, the spirit searcheth out the deep things. Yea, the deep things of God. So, what God communicates with is our spirit. God communicates our spirit. So, the first thing is this. If you want to hear God, stop expecting that. You know, this. Is, let, let me tell you, I hear this kind of crazy concept. And this is a crazy concept that I hear. There's a way you're praying, or you finish praying, then you stay for about 10 minutes and say, God, speak to me now in Jesus' name. Listen to me. That's so crazy. Because the way you are talking is as if God needs to speak, you know, because you have to keep quiet for God to speak. Listen, God is a master communicator. As you're speaking, he's what they call it, is speaking into your spirit. That's why I can be talking to you right now and I'm hearing and it's not as if I'm hearing, I'm hearing with the ears of my spirit, I'm perceiving with my heart, I can be looking at you and be seeing the vision, and you're like, you know, sometimes I'm praying, and I'm looking, I'm saying, I see in the spirit, and when I say in the seeing the spirit, what I mean, really mean is that the eye of my spirit is seeing something, which is not my physical eye, because my physical eye could be opened and seeing, you know, this phone I'm speaking through, but the eye of my spirit is connected to someone in Canada, and I'm seeing the situation. So, what I'm saying so is that you need to understand fundamentally that God communicates through me through the Spirit. So, when something happens, I'm not trying to hear from this ear. I'm trying to hear from the ear in my spirit. I'm not trying to see from this eye. I'm trying to see from my spirit. So, that, that's how God communicates to me. So, this is the first thing you need to know about guidance. 
So the reason a lot of people make guidance is this. They really hope that God would talk to them by their feelings. And the Bible says this, we walk by faith and not by sight. God does not communicate by feeling. God is not in the realm of feelings. God is not in the realms of feelings. Listen to me. God is not in the realm. You don't have to feel him. As a matter of fact, when God appeared to um, when God appeared to Elijah, the Bible says there was a mighty storm and there was this and that. The Bible says it was so loud, but God was not in it. So this is what you want to do. You say, Lord, um, you know, if, if it's the guy wants to marry, let him, let me feel something. So you come your way and, you know, you're feeling something. You know, and God is not in that. Our God leads you by his spirit in the inside of you. So guidance is firstly an internal fan. So let me back up and say this. Man is a spirit. He has a soul and he lives in the body. So what does God communicate to? Watch this now. Education communicates to your reason, your mental cap faculty. Your feelings communicate to what? Your body. What communicates to your spirit? Revelation communicates to your spirit. Revelation communicates to your spirit. And what is revelation? It's just a pullback. Your spirit seeing something. And that's why 1 Corinthians says this. Because this is a fundamental thing. Because this is why people don't hear God. Why don't they hear God? Because the expectation that God is going to speak to me. Because they keep, they keep hearing this about ears and ears and mind. And they don't understand that the same way a physical body has eyes and nose and mouth. Your spirit also has senses, but they are spiritual senses. So the Bible says in 1 Corinthians, he says, Eyes have not seen, neither ears heard, neither has he entered into the heart of man. What God has planned for them that love him. But now he has revealed it unto us. Is it by hearing? No, by his spirit. Because it's a revelation. So if you want God to speak to you, you must understand this. God guides me by the spirit on the inside of me. Let me break it down to you. Look at this phone again. Let's go back to this phone. Look at this phone again. The reason I will receive an MTN call on this number or a Vodacom, Vodacom call on this phone is simply this is because there is a sim card that connects me to vodacom so the, it's true that the phone receives signal it's true that i hear god but what really hear god in me is the sin and the sin is the spirit so it's my spirit because my spirit is the path that is fully god so god communicates to me by his spirit god communicates so all guidance are from the spirit all guidance are from the spirit and that's why if you're not spiritually trained and that's why you can see the most intelligent people might not be able to hear god because their mind is trained but their spirit is not trained the strongest people that have the big physique and six pack might not be able to hear god because their body is trained but their spirit is not trained let me give an example did you know that there was a time the voice of god came when Jesus was 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 alive, and he says, "This my beloved son in whom," um, he said, "This my beloved son, I'm glorified." And the Bible says that those around said, "It what?" They said, "It thundereth." I'm like, really? How can you say it thundereth? God spoke, but the reason why they said it thundereth was this: they didn't have the capacity to hear the voice of God, so there was distortion. Have you tried to receive signal before for a network you're not entitled to? It can come off and on, but it will not be a strong signal. That's exactly what happens. Okay, so some people are asking me questions. How do I train my spirit? How do I get my spirit trained? Okay, so this is very simple. How do you get your body trained? You exercise and eat right. That's how you get your body trained. How do you get your soul or your mind trained? You get information, you read. That's how you get your soul trained. How do you get your spirit trained? By feeding on spiritual content and exercising based on what you know by feeding on spiritual content and exercising based on what you know let's move quickly so five five ways that god leads us five ways that god leads us number one god leads us by his word that's very powerful god leads see let me tell you something when you read the bible the bible by itself it's a prophecy so how does that happen isaiah 30 verse 12 says you shall hear a word a word behind you see what it says he says not maybe we should just read it isaiah chapter 30 
verse 12. If anybody can put on the screen, I will be so grateful. Verse 21, rather. It says, Thy ears, it says, Thy ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way walk in it. Did you notice that it says you will hear a word behind you? The book of Psalms 119 says something. It says, Thy word is light unto my um, is lamp unto my feet and light unto my path. When it says the word is lamp and light, what does lamp and light do? Lamp and light talks about guidance and what direction. That's what it talks about. It talks about guidance and what direction. That's what light and lamp talks about. So, how does God how does God speak to us? The first thing is this. Now, let me let me debunk something. So, so most people think when I say God is speaking to me, that God is saying A, B, C, D. Sometimes it's not God saying something. It's you looking through the Bible and God, let's just Psalm 119. Let me just show you that quickly. Psalm 119. This is really interesting. Wow. It says, um, so it says this, um, your word, I'm trying to find it. Psalm 119. It says the word is lamp. Psalm 119 verse 105. It says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. So, why is the word called a lamp? You hold a lamp to allow you see where you're going. So, the word of God gives direction. So, let me tell you what happens to me sometimes. Sometimes I have something in my mind. Like this morning, I have something that I was praying about and all the direction on. And as I was praying about having direction, as I heard the word of God, sometimes the way I get direction is that God begins to actually speak to me from the word. The word is lamp. Then it says, the word is light unto my feet, unto my part. So sometimes this is what happens to people. People go through life and they don't have like really huge expectation when they read the Bible. When you read the Bible and you read from a place that is very deep, one of the things that happens to you is that you begin to receive guidance and light from the word of God. The second thing, so God leads us first by his word. And let me tell you something. There is no leadership that is more superior to the leadership of God's word. Because God's word is foundation. He said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. As I meditate in the word of God, I get direction. As I meditate in the word of God, I get direction. If this is getting deep right now. If you want to inform your friends to join, go ahead and get them to inform them to join. So I, I want to say something to you. Someone says to me that, you know, I, I, I want to marry this guy. But he doesn't really believe in God. What do you think? Listen to me. What does God think? I don't have to. I don't have to go and pray about that. We already know that God says we should not really be linked to people that don't know Him. That that's enough guidance. The Word is a lamp unto my feet. Someone says, "Well, you know, um, you know, Pastor, you know, I love this girl, but she's married to somebody else. Don't you think that God can give it to me? It's the will of God." I'm like, "Brother, you're drunk." The reason why is that Saul knows his wife cannot be your wife because the Bible says that you should not covet another man's property. That's someone else's wife. And when you don't have this balance, you see people do crazy and weird things because they don't know how to follow God's word. The second thing, so, so God leads by his word. The second way he says, because the fundamental way is that one says, Pastor, pray for I want, to, I want God to lead me. And when they say they want God to lead them, what they really want to say is that they want God to speak into their hearts. And let me say something to you. If you're not grateful for how God is leading you right now, you may never be able to grow and express all that dimension in God's leadership. If you're not grateful for how God leads you right now, you may not be able to really grow and experience all that dimension in God's leadership. So God leads us by his word. The second way is that God leads us by peace. I want to look at Isaiah chapter 55 verse 12. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 12. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 12. Hey, the Bible says, For you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. So how does God lead us with peace? Let me tell you something. Every child of God has that peace on the inside of him. And what happens is this over time. You know, when you want to make a decision... You will notice if you are in peace or you have lost your peace. So you want to make a, let's say you want to make an investment decision. Do you, have you noticed sometimes you just feel as if, 
uh, I, I can't place it, but this doesn't seem too right. And that's because you don't have peace. You know, you want to date this girl and this girl seems really, fi she's fire. Like, oh my God. Oh, Laquida. Laquida is hot. But you don't have peace. You, you want to move from Toronto and move to, you know, some other part of Canada, but you don't have peace. God says, I lead you by peace. Listen to me. Anywhere you, anything you want to do and your peace is gone, most of the time, it's the proof that God is not with you on that journey. God leads you by peace. So it's not enough to say, God leads you by peace. God leads you by his peace. So are you trying to make an investment decision? Are you trying to, you know, are you trying to make a financial decision? God leads you by his peace. The third way God leads us is this. And this is, this what we're more familiar God leads us by his voice. God leads us by his voice. And someone says, how do you know it's the voice of God? Because, because how does God lead by his voice? You, it, will, it will just speak into your spirit. He will just speak into your spirit. And the thing is this. Someone says, well, how do I know the voice of God? Let me tell you, I know the voice of God. You want to not know the voice of God? Do you want to not know the voice of God? I'll tell you the truth now. This is why I learned the voice of God. When I read the Bible, I noticed that a voice used to interpret the Bible to me. When I say hearing the voice of God, that was the same voice that I began to hear. Because it was the same voice of the Holy Spirit that interpreted the Bible to me in my personal study. That began to teach me what to do every day. The reason why you don't know the voice of God is this. You have not spent enough time with the Holy Spirit in studying the Word of God. So how do you know the voice in real time? How do you know the voice of your dad and your mom? The way you knew your voice of your dad and your mom was simple. Was simple. You spent time with them and you knew this was the voice of God. You know what? When I began to study my Bible, the voice kind of leads me and teaches me stuff. And when the, when the voice teaches me stuff, when I hear the voice in, real, in other things, I'm able to peek and say, wow, this is the same voice I heard. Because that's the voice that teaches the Bible. And that's why this thing with Christianity, it's not about a pastor, it's not about a church, it's a relationship. Let me tell you something. People want to do touch and go with God. It never works that way. It never works that way. If you want to follow God, you're going to be patient. You're going to know Him, feel Him, understand Him, and that works with you personally. So the fourth way, now, I'm, I'm going to really dwell on the fourth one. And the fourth one is that, so the first one, God leads us by His word. God leads us by peace. God leads us by His voice. The fourth one is this, God leads us by what we call the inward weakness. Now, for those of you that are familiar with teachings and doctrine, you understand what that means. But most people do not understand what this means. And I'm going to teach you. So what is the inward weakness? You need to pay attention to this. Because the Bible says that, um, Bible says we have the spirit of, of, of Christ in us. That bears witness with us. What does it say? It says it bears witness saying, Abba, Father. Did you notice something? He didn't say the Spirit is speaking. He said the Spirit bears witness. So what is the inward weakness? The inward weakness is a check in our spirit. Give me a minute, please. The inward weakness, no, 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 it's not weakness, it's weakness. You know, like the cut weakness, yeah. W-I-T-N-E-S-S, -S. you're right. Maybe I'm not pronouncing it well. So, the inward weakness gives, you know, the inward weakness, what is it? The inward weakness is a check in our spirit. What does it do? Watch this now. The Bible says that, how do you are born again? It said the spirit bursts weakness with our spirit that we're children of God. It's a weakness. It's a weakness. It's a weakness. So, the spirit bears weakness with our spirit. So, how does it work? This is a simple way it works. This is a simple way this works. When you are born again, that spirit, just, it's, it's a green light and it's a red light. That's what it is. It's a green light. It's 
the inward weakness is like an is like a is like a scanning is like a scan machine at the airport. So let me tell you how it works. Excuse me. The inward weakness is not a proactive leading. What does a proactive leading mean? Go right, go left. It tells you what to do. That's a proactive leading. The inward weakness is a reactive leading. What is a reactive leading? A reactive leading means that it's, you're not going to find out what it says until you begin to respond. So I'll give you an example of what I mean. The scanning machine at the airport does not vibrate or do anything until you pass something through it. So when you go through the machine, it will respond. By itself, it does not respond. By itself, it does not respond. How does the inward weakness work? The inward weakness is you, when you pass decisions through your spirit, you give the inward weakness the opportunity to either agree or disagree. You, you know, to either agree or disagree. That's what happens with the inward weakness. You, it's agree or disagree. That's what happens with the inward weakness. So I, I'm saying this. I'm saying this to you because I, I really wanted to understand this. So let me tell you how this works. You know, Paul will say something like, and the Spirit of God was bearing us witness in every city. Let me tell you how this works. So, let's say that you want to start a business. As you begin, the inward weakness may tell, you know, when you want to start a business, you may not feel the guidance to go ahead or not go ahead. But this is what happens. As you begin to bring that decision before God in prayer, the inward weakness will give you a release or go ahead. Or there will be a restraint as say, don't go ahead. That is the inward weakness. It's, it's a check. It's a check. I, let, let me give you another example. Let's say you want to, maybe you want to migrate or you want to start to change your job. And you notice that this thing looks very great. But the moment I think about it from a spiritual perspective, there's a withdrawal. There's a disagreement I feel. Or there's an agreement I feel. That's the inward weakness. The inward weakness is not a voice. It's a weakness. It's a, it's like, it's a, it's an attestation. It's a, it's a scanning machine. It's a, it's going to agree or disagree. I, I don't know. If you know what I'm talking about, just type. I, I know what you're talking about. I've experienced it before. Let me give an example. So, there was, um, um someone sent me a message recently. And he said, uh, Pastor Balaji, thank you for teaching us God's word. He said, during the morning prayers, I just felt the need to just say, to just walk from home and not go to work. And that's what the person felt. He said, you know what? I kind of pushed myself and went to work eventually. He said, I didn't know. The thing with the inward weakness is this. It doesn't give you reasons. It doesn't explain to you. It's just a weakness. It's just an agreement, a disagreement, an approval, or a disapproval. It's, there's, no, there's no thing there. So this guy said, I just didn't feel I, sh- I, sh- I shouldn't go to work. And I said, okay, you know, I, I, let me just go because that's what I do. And as I was going on the road, he had, he had an accident. He said, that I just wish I'd listen to the weakness of the Holy Spirit. And I'm saying so because... The primary way, the primary way a Christian is led is by the inward weakness. So, it's not you hearing a voice because you already have the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. So, it's something like when you do the right thing, that Holy Ghost said, mm, thumbs up, there's an agreement. And when you do the wrong thing, like, mm, 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 there's a disagreement. The reason why most people struggle to hear God is this. Most people expect to hear a voice. But sometimes, and most times, what God is leading us by is not a voice. Um, this, this someone said, someone posted something here. He said, I've experienced this before. Dating this guy, you know, logically, and it was the right one for me, but my spirit just kept pulling back, you know, and, and that's work of the inward weakness. And what happens in the inward weakness is this. The inward weakness is ahead of your mind. It's, ye- it's weeks, months, or years later that you be like, oh my God, you kind of catch up with what the inward weakness is saying. You kind of catch up with what the inward weakness is saying. So, the same thing I'm saying here, that, that's the same thing I'm sharing here today. That's what I'm sharing here today. So, you need to, but the reason why people don't really lose God is this, because they really think that the only, that if God is going to lead me, he's going to send angels. Have you noticed something? Did you, I'm not sure you noticed this. 
there were more angelic ministry in the Old Testament than in the New Testament. You know why? Because in the Old Testament, they didn't have the Holy Ghost. In the New Testament, we don't need so much angelic ministry because in the Old Testament, they were led from outside. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Poro. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so getting so excited. In the Old Testament, they were led from the outside. They didn't have the Holy Ghost on the inside of them. In the New Testament, we are led from the inside because the Holy Ghost is within us. We are led from the inside. That's why you notice that in the New Testament, there were angelic ministries, but it wasn't a lot. And I'm saying so to you because a lot of Christians, so when you say you're not hearing God, most of the time you want to hear God in a certain way, or you are trained to hear God in a certain way, you are not trained to hear God in some other way. For example, God says, the Bible says, how do you know you're born again? You know, how do you know you're born again? The Bible says the spirit bears witness. It's not as if God tells you that now you're born again. He says, how do you know you're born again? He says, there is a witness. That's what I'm talking about. There's that agreement on the inside of you. More than what the pastor said, more than what the teacher said, more than what your parents said, more than what your wife said, more than what your church said, that, hey, I'm a child of God. That's the inward witness. It's just an agreement on the inside of you. He says, the spirit bears witness. Someone say instinct. It's more than instinct. Most of the time, instinct will rely on some kind of residual information. The inward witness relies on revelation. The inward witness relies. Instinct will, 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 will rely a lot of some kind of information, some kind of pattern, some all those kind of things. The inward witness is more than that. It is. It is the witness of the spirit. But this is how it works. The weakness of the spirit works by you being exposed. So listen to me. The weakness of the spirit does not work by itself. Like um, do right and left. It doesn't go that way. But this is what it works. The moment you present a choice to it, the weakness of the spirit either agrees or disagrees with it. So this is how it works. Until you present a choice or a decision to it, the weakness of the spirit is never obvious. All, all of you on Facebook, I want to type and say, if you're getting me, all of you on, on, on um, Instagram, if you understand what I'm talking about, just communicate even though you understand what I'm talking about. You know, you know, just type, I'm getting it. You know, you know, thank you, Sam, um, Sam Mary. I can see you over there. You know, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So, so that's the inward weakness. And the last thing I want to talk about is that God guides us through visions and dreams. God guides us through visions and dreams. And I, I don't have a lot of time to say that tonight because we can continue that next week. Um, there are three types of so so just for you to know you know many of you don't know this but most of the time dreams are considered the lowest form of revelation dreams and the reason why is this dreams are one of those revelation channels that can be easily tampered with you you can choose to dream tonight you can choose to dream tonight you know, why some dream, and, and that's why dreams, so some dreams are from God, some dreams are satanic, and some dreams are just things that happen by the day. The book of Proverbs says, or is it Ecclesiastes, he says, a dream cometh but the multitude of business. So sometimes dreams, you know, are the low, are considered the lowest forms of revelation. Someone says, so let me ask, ask some questions here. Are you ready for some deep stuff here? This is time to get your friends to come around. Some deep stuff here. I've heard things like, if you don't dream, you need deliverance. Listen to me. That's Bible nonsense. Typical Aaron nonsense. That's religious stupidity at the epitome. So I said, how can you say that? Number one, there's no way in the Bible that inferred that if you don't have a certain spiritual gift, that there's something wrong with you. There's no, that is not how it works. So, how can someone say, if you don't dream, that something's wrong with you? The second thing is this. The best person want to be like is Jesus Christ. There's no record of Jesus ever dreaming. Does it mean that Jesus was demon-possessed or he needed deliverance or something was wrong with him? Where do we get all this junk from? Jesus, there's no record that Jesus ever dreamt. And you have people that say, you don't dream, you need deliverance, you don't dream, this is all wrong. Listen, there's no record that Jesus, Paul the apostle, we even have no record, you know, we, we have no record of such. Jesus never dreamt. If there's someone that is perfect and should exhibit all of the spiritual gift that we know, 
the person should be Jesus. That person must be Jesus. But there's no record that Jesus ever germs. Am I saying that God doesn't use dreams? That's not what I'm saying. But let's put the dreams where it is. Don't let's add to the Bible. Don't let's subtract from the Bible. I can't say because you don't speak in tongues in deliverance. That's wrong. How can you say because I don't exercise some spiritual gifts I need deliverance? And to make it worse, Jesus Christ never dreamt. Now, the second thing is this. Let's talk about dreams. And maybe that's how I'll, maybe I'll pick up that tomorrow, maybe next week. Someone says, um, when you see this in your dream, this is what this means. When you see this in your dream, this is what this means. I want to ask you something. The people that know what everything means in the dream, where do they get it from? Oh, wow. The table just got shattered. The people, you know, Someone says, I dream and I don't remember. Listen to me. This is what I tell myself. My God is kind and love merciful. If I dream I don't remember and they try to tell me something, it will tell me again. God is not that God that I'm trying to talk to you. You miss it. Finish. Go and die. Read the Bible. It talks to people so many, many times. Even when they miss it, it comes back and talks to them. Just like I told you last week. Religion says that once you sin, God doesn't talk to you. Someone said, I, I used to be very spiritual it was because I sinned that God's cut off from me. I'm like, your God seems different from the God of the Bible. Someone said, why do you say so? Because in the Bible, when Adam and Eve sinned, guess who came? God came to them. He was even hiding. He was looking for them. I'm like, why is your own God different? They said, well, that's Adam and Eve. But when Cain sinned and killed Abel, who came to him? God came to look for Cain. How come your own God seems different? Why? So, the reason I'm saying this to you, and this is a big reason I'm saying this to you, big reason I'm saying this to you, because what you believe would eventually become what you experience. So, you know, I believe in dreams, but I want to put dreams away is. So the fifth part of our God leads us is dreams and visions. I'm going to wrap this up so I can take some time for questions. So this is the time for you to be putting your question down. And if you want me to pray with this, also time to put your prayer points down. So the first thing about, the first thing is this, number one, the fifth thing that God leads us by is dreams and visions. There are three types of visions. The spiritual, the spiritual open vision, there are trance, you know, um, the, the spiritual vision, there's open visions and there are trance, you know, yeah, there are those type of three visions, like right there. I will talk about it later. But also, there are dreams. So, dreams will be what you sleep in the night and you will have. So, you know, so, so that, that's a dream. So, we explain to you that, you know, sometimes dreams are just nothing. When I was younger, when we had exams, I would see myself writing, you know, papers in the exam. Just because that was what was on my mind, it, it doesn't mean that I was being attacked. For a spiritual exam or something. The second thing is this. Um, dreams, some dreams are demonic. So Satan comes in your dream and use puts a thought in it. And sometimes, you know, what they call it. Um, sometimes the third one is this. God would also give you a dream. Like he gave, you know, he gives several dreams. Someone says, when I have a dream, I don't, um, I, I don't understand. Um, how do I get interpretation? Listen, if God gave you a dream, then he must have the interpretation from you. Have you noticed this? Notice something, everyone. The people that looked for interpretation of dreams were those that were not close to God. All the people that were close to God when they dreamt, they kind of knew what, they were, what the dream was. So that's what we're going to talk today. We're going to, so next, we're going to talk about dreams and visions and prophecy, and we'll take it from there. All right, let's take some questions. I dreamt of speaking in tongues even before I could even before I could, because I thought about, I, I don't know what I, I didn't get your question. So it says, but Joseph interpreted dreams, sir. Yeah, 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 he did. Did I say he didn't? Does, does a rejecter or refuser from, what about revelation? I don't know what you mean by that. You won't have to do. 
I need prayers for my digital marketing business. Okay, one prayer for your business. Prayer for my sisters. Okay, that's fine. So I said, it is a particular way you hear from God, but you are currently asking him for something and he doesn't speak to you. Okay, okay, okay. So someone says something like, um, I'm trying to hear God about something, but I'm not hearing him, but I normally hear from God. Listen to me. Every time you're trying to hear God about something, you're not hearing from God. Just know this. It's not God, it's you. And what happens, because let me tell you something. This is the way guidance work. I want to give you the big deal about guidance. I mean, I can start from this next week. God does not lead you like you pray now and he leads you. You pray now and he leads you. No. The whole of God's guidance is like a map. God puts the map in your spirit. So what happens when you are looking for guidance is this. You are just accessing the guidance that is already available in your spirit. That's what I'm talking about. So when you understand that, you know it's not God holding you back. You are just trying to access the guidance in your spirit. So when we say we want to get spiritual guidance, it's not as if we are going to God. We are trying to access what God has in the spirit for us already. It's guidance. It's like a GPS. You know, the GPS, when you connect to the GPS, the GPS is not the one making the roads. It's not the one making the traffic. It's not even, it's just, you're just connecting something right there. Okay. Sir, do imaginations come through? Of course, imaginations come through. How did you imagine when God is speaking to you and, and your Christian mind speaking to you? We'll talk about that next week. My dreams come to pass, and most times it's negative. What I mean, it's your belief system, so it's being used. After that, some things are demonic. So if you dream a dream you don't like, you get up and cancel it. Because after that, some dreams are demonic. Thank you, Pastor. This is powerful. My dreams come to pass. Thank you for letting me this powerful. By the way, tomorrow's service, I'm talking about what to do when you need a change desperately. I posted the flyer there. What to do when you need a change desperately. My, my, ladies and gentlemen, it's a powerful teaching on faith. It will be shaking. Someone says, are we closing already? We are closing. Ten it, ten no. We are closing already. You can go back and watch it. If this blessed you, when I share the video, please post a comment. I want to tag your friends. I want to tag your friend. When I, I usually dream, accurate dream, um, it's top. How do I get it back? Just, 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 I'm not sure you're concerned about getting it, but just pray. Just pray, I believe, and receive. You know, and sometimes God is just changing the way he's talking to you. How does God talk to us through our conscience? Um, I can explain that later. Um, someone says, Sir, don't you think God hears our, I don't know what that means. Some of you are saying things I cannot read very well. Um, yeah. How do we interpret dreams from God? By praying to the one that gave it to you. How do I not differ between my mind that is talking and when God is speaking to me? By experience and by paying attention to the voice of the Holy Spirit in his word. I don't remember my dreams and it's not good and it's not good because each time I dream. Well, if you don't remember your it's not good, I don't know what I don't know why you think it's not good. Because I also don't remember my dreams. Sometimes. But why do you pay for my finances? Um, okay, so, all right, okay, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. So if you have some time, you know, does membership class still hold? Uh, I, I, I need to find out this information, you know, uh, I want to be married to this man, I have been praying to God, he's not even spoken to me through dreams, which is the normal way he speaks to me, what do I do? The thing is that, my, my sister, after, you need to just watch this again. You know, that's what you need to do. Just watch the message again. Um, what do you place about premonition? Premonitions are premonitions. All right, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. If you're sick, you can want to stretch forth your hands this way. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I thank you for your love and grace. Thank you because you're a good and faithful God. I pray for everyone who's watching it. I command the sicknesses to go. I command the diseases to leave. I command the infirmities to be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, begin to hear God life and direct. Let all the confusion go. I pray that your business begin to do well. You will prosper. I pray that you grow spiritually. I pray for activation of the gift of the Spirit. But blessed and mightily favored. I rebuke the hand of the devil of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 
Let's never, this coming Monday week is very, very special. I have some very powerful testimony. A lady told, a lady said a testimony. A lady said a testimony on Next Level Prayer and said that at, I think, 20 weeks, her cervix opened, at, which is, she meant to get about, I think, 40 weeks, if, you are, if I'm not wrong. And the baby was going to come out. They could not put it back together. And the doctor said she was either going to lose the baby or said it was a miracle. She came to the next level, began to pray. And guess what happened? The service closed back by itself by the power of the Holy Spirit. A lady said a testimony of how she miraculously did the deal and got $500,000. And she was just believing in God for this. She told me the bank account statement is the power of the Holy Ghost. I want you to tell us your testimony. Let's know what the Lord is doing. I want to also invite your friends. And um, to all of you in Canada, I hope to have a meeting with you guys soon. We kind of have some groups in Canada and in London and in the US. And I think we're trying to start a group in South Africa. If you're interested, just link up with me and I'll tell you what to do. All of that I've linked up, just give us some time. We'll put some communications to go ahead. Thank you so much and God bless you. See you tomorrow. If you're coming to the live center, let me know. Say hello to me. If your friends are around here, let them also come. It will be powerful tomorrow. When what you need, de when you need a desperate change, it life changes tomorrow. Thank you and God bless you.